Hello and welcome to the Think Tank. I'm Pastor Devin. I'm so glad you're joining us. Um, you know, we're ending the Christmas season and uh, everybody loves the Christmas season. Uh, they say it's the best time of the year. Why? Because, well, people for are what? They're nicer to one another. They they enjoy being around one another. Even people that are mean, they go, they, they, they seem to have a soft spot during this time. And it's a wonderful gift. It's maybe the best gift of all because people just do things out of the goodness of their heart because of the season. And a lot of reasons they don't know why they're doing it. They're doing it. Oh, it's Christmas. I expect to do it. It's because Jesus came to give the ultimate gift at Christmas time. He came to be born and then to die for our sins so we could live forever in heaven. And it's the most selfless thing ever. And people have this inside of them wanting to be selfless. And during this part of the year, they are. But what happens on December 26th? December 26th, things go back to normal. People go back to being who they are. And the complaining, the grumbling, and all that starts over again. Everybody can't wait for next Christmas. Here's the thing. God said we could have amazing things every day. We don't have to go back to that lifestyle once we become a Christian. He wants to fill you with all joy. And he gave us a lot of gifts at Christmas. They're, they're, they're not to be used not just at Christmas time, but throughout the entire year, the every day of your life. And one of those great gifts is the gift of hope. And you know what? And people go, you know, they, they hope is such a wonderful thing. But people don't trust hope because a lot of people promise hope. Like politicians, even pastors promise a lot of hope, but then they don't see it being delivered on. What you got to understand is, is, is Jesus Christ is the one who delivers hope. We looked at him, he says, I give you hope that will bound to all joy, Romans 15, 13. Who doesn't want all joy? Through the power of the Holy Ghost. I mean, he, gets, he wants to give you power to do some amazing things so you can actually overcome what? What is the opposite of hope? Worry, right? We worry about a lot of things. Yesterday in church, I read a survey from, from a college uh, that had done a thing about worry. And their conclusion was that 92% of the things we worry about never really happen. Think about that. 92% of the stuff we worry about never happen. You know, we, we, we worry about things and we create, we put things in distance, in distance that aren't real. You know, uh, I had a quote yesterday in church that said this. Um, worry is the worst use of one's imagination. They think about that. It, it, it is. It's a terrible use of one's imagination. We, 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 we imagine so many things and we bring so many things into our lives that causes so much grief that never existed in the first place. And why do we do that? Because we, well, we wonder what somebody else thinks or we think the situation's going to be worse. Rarely is ever the worst case scenario. And rarely do we ever know what the other person's really thinking. I just know what they're thinking. <laughs> really? You do? Uh, no one does. No one really knows the other person. Only way to find out is to talk to them. And usually you, come up, you find out you're splendidly surprised it wasn't what you thought it was. Um, that's why God gave us Matthew 18, 15 to 17, in order to keep conflicts from happening. God, God knows what he's doing. He doesn't want you to worry about things. He says, I want to give you hope. And not a hope that disappoints, but a hope that has founded not only when you get to heaven, but right now in your life. He wants you to bound to all glory all joy right now on earth romans 15 13 and he gave us the power of the holy spirit to do that to overcome our worry yeah well, many times we worry yeah doesn't mean you're not going to worry remember we're christians we're also humans and we're going to have times where we worry about things just it's going to happen we're human but that's why we need the church so we can help each other and hold one another hold one another up in hope so they can realize that there is hope for an amazing future, and not only an amazing future, but an amazing present. Because God's not the God of the past or the future. He's the God of right now, and he wants to bless your life right now. And yeah, these things might be happening, but you don't have to worry about it because God says, I already got it figured out. I already got a plan. The Bible shows us so many times God has a plan. Sometimes we go, well, God, you're not doing it the way I want it to do. Let God do it his way. So many times God did so many things. Like, how did that happen? Read the story of Jericho. Read the story of Jehoshaphat. Read Elisha's story. Read Jesus' story on the cross. He didn't have to die on the cross to save us. He's God. He could do it any way he wanted to. But he did it to blow our minds and show us how far he was willing to go to show him how much he loved us. What an amazing thing. And that alone gives us hope. But we don't just have to hope in the future. We can have hope right now that God's still working for you. And God's still doing things for you. And that things might cause you worry. But when you give it over to God and just lay it at his feet. He'll take care of it for you in a way that is amazing for you and also is amazing for those around you, including those who might not be for you. But God loves them, too. And he's going to show them, hey, that you're on the right side because he cares for you. And why? Because Jesus loves you. I love you. And you are absolutely awesome.